Hey there. So this is a banked video for Daily Devotional. And I, uh, I drew this card this morning and I wanted to go into the depth of the, the book on this card. So I'm gonna start from the very beginning. But this card is called 41 Sacred Law of the Northwest. And I think it's really important we talk about the depth of meaning in this card. So I'm going to read the entire section of this. So if this is not a daily devotional you wanna to listen to me read, that's okay. But um, I felt moved, I think it's important. The soul recognizes the choices that will facilitate alignment with its authentic path and the spiritual dimensions from which it originates. Such integrity is not externally motivated, but internally driven. At a certain stage on the path, the soul will no longer rely on the societal beliefs as the best barometer for conduct and will cultivate a more mature, spiritually aligned inner code that resonates with its particular understanding of sacred law. To find your way through any matter of concern, take your time to reflect upon your choices. Until you sense that which resonates with your heart, many blessings as yet unseen will flow as you remain in alignment with your soul's inner code. In our divine feminine shamanic medicine mandala, Northwest is the place of sacred law. We might also call this natural, universal, or spiritual law. The laws of the universe provide equitable cosmic governance for all beings. Spiritual law applies regardless of one's opinion, belief system, or cultural or religious upbringing, and the evolving spiritual integrity of the soul aligns naturally with its principles. Sacred law is egalitarian. It is just and equitable, equitably at play always, although from the human perspective, it may not always appear that way. It is not often possible to perceive the overall scheme of cosmic checks and balances and how or when they manifest on each soul's path. Fairness and justice exist innately within the spiritual dimension nonetheless, and the eye within the universal divine heart sees all. Although the workings of higher law cannot often be fathomed, they are trustworthy. Even when the law requires the soul to grow through periods of limitation or testing to build capacity for certain tasks and hollow out sufficient internal spaciousness within which miraculous grace can then manifest. Koala medicine is complex. The adorable arboreal dwelling marsupial is a totem for resurrection, renewal, as well as the custodian of sacred law. The primary diet of koalas is the eucalyptus leaves. These leaves contain toxic chemicals, which create an increased need for rest to digest. Koalas will sleep for around 20 hours daily. When processing complex, difficult, or toxic experiences, koalas encourage the wise approach of slow and steady to thoroughly digest the challenge and become able to withdraw to benefit the release of the remainder. There's little inherent nutrition in eucalyptus leaves, but koalas know how to pick and choose the juiciest leaves and will vary their diet depending on what is available to include wattle, laurel, pine, and paper barks. When koala appears, there may be situations in your life that require an inordinate amount of time and energy, yet yielding very little benefit in return. You may encounter circumstances of limited nourishment and at certain times in your life that require you to be creative and selective to make the most of what is available to you. Know that you can expand your energy and sources to include that which is more beneficial too. Koalas feed at night and rest during the day. When koala appears in the oracle, it can indicate that a deep soul healing process is underway and your dreams are actively nourishing your process. Night represents the mysterious, intelligent, slow-moving restorative function of the deep mind accessed through your dreams, meditation, ritual, and sacred practices and creative self-expression. This contrasts daytime, which can represent conscious activity, logical strategy, making things happen through willpower. 
There are times when healing requires that we trust in the facets of our being that operate below and beyond our conscious awareness. The surrender and, more, and surrender the more masculine task-oriented conscious approach to steady to instead follow the feminine genius to perform her instinctive, corrective, irrational healing magic. Koala invites the divine, principle, divine feminine principles of natural healing and restoration through rest and dreaming into our process. Teachings that are at times, teachings that there are times when logical, rational approaches to life are inadequate for the task at hand. Sometimes we need a non-ordinary experience to prepare the way before logical steps and conscious activity become appropriate and useful. Koalas are largely solitary, but there is a sacred symbiosis between the koala and the tree. Thermal imaging reveals koalas can cool their bodies by transferring internal heat when they hug the trees. During times when social activity may be inhibited, it may be difficult to metabolize energies that would normally be consumed through social interaction. Conversely, too much social interaction or too much incoming information or energy can strain our psychic digestive capacities and create an overload of subtle heat in the body. This simply doesn't feel good. Releasing it enhances well-being and restores mental clarity and vitality. The supportive koala tree exchange models the body's innate capacity to discharge excess energy through physical connection with the natural world. Nature is capable of receiving you faithfully without judgment. She possesses the spiritual facility for transformation. Whatever stress you release can be absorbed and pacified by her cooling receptive consciousness. Balance is the sacred law and as such the natural world evokes it. In a dreaming story of koala from the first nations of the people of Australia, there's an orphan boy named Kubor. Kubor, Kubor, Kubor. He is socially neglected, denied the water that could state his thirst, sate his thirst. On a day when the community departs to hunt, Kubor stows all the water supplies in a tree. He sings magic songs that cause the trees to grow very high until only he can access the water. The people return and are very angry, punishing Kubor when he refuses to return the water. The people then witness the orphan's wounded body transforming into a koala. As koala, he is freed from the suffering of unmet thirst and becomes a spiritual lawmaker. From the heights of the treetops, Koala makes a spiritual decree and warning to the people. If he is not respected, his spirit will cause drought, so that all beings except Koalas shall perish. The Koala is the medicine of the shamanic regeneration, the capacity to transform through suffering and rise above it, coming to understand sacred law and embody it at a sp as a spiritual guardian. Koala wisdom arises when we initially fail in our attempts to resolve our suffering making things worse through our unskillful efforts when our darkest moments and then in our darkest moments. We have an unexpected spiritual epiphany that transforms us. Rather like koala obtaining water from the foliage it eats, we learn a creative and effective new way to heal ourselves and receive what we want and need in graceful harmony with life. We can then be, guide, we can then be a guide for others to learn the same lesson. Koala teaches that even the most unfair situations will prepare you on a healing path, empowering you to find grace and healing, becoming an embodiment of universal wisdom. You possess the inner power necessary to overcome your struggles and mature to a spiritual way shower. So trust your nature and trust your destiny. The mature soul experiences sacred law as a guiding wisdom, which will not always play to our whims and wishes, and yet is deeply respectful and honoring of the highest good for all beings, nonetheless. You may feel out of step with society at times. What is acceptable or even encouraged in mainstream consciousness may not be spiritually acceptable for you at all. You will know when your soul is bound by a greater dictate of sacred law, because no matter how many around you tell you something is okay, you will simply not be able to bring yourself to behave in a certain way without feeling you're betraying yourself in the process. The outer circumstances or views matter less to you than your adherence to a more spiritually compelling inner truth. Whilst the intellect is remarkably clever at justifying or condemning according to its caprice, the heart has a steady allegiance to sacred law. 
stay faithful to what you know to be true. So a couple things in this. That's why I read the whole thing. So key piece that there's a couple ones. One is the sacred law is egalitarian. And I go over this all the time with people. There is a sense many times that it's not fair. But what comes back from that is always, not always, but many times, there is somebody's guide in the background saying words like, reframe that. Let's look at it differently. Can you help them see it from a different perspective? So I do that a lot. And that reframing for a really long time, I didn't understand what guides were saying when they said that. I just would tell people, no, that's not what your guide said. And I would just move on. And now I understand that the reframing is helping people understand that your blueprint is this amazing thing that you created to guide your path here. You chose your guides, you chose your path, and you have a lot of power in that. So when something doesn't seem fair and something seems really hard, reframe it. Look at what is the lesson within it? What is the universal, right? Like egalitarian rightness of what's happening? What is the cause and effect? Um, Fairness and justice exist innately within the spiritual dimension. So when you're following your path and you're learning and trusting and letting go of the ego, some of the things that hold you back or feel to hold you back or feel unfair do balance out. I like that they start with koala medicine is complex because there's three pages of this and it is very complex. So one thing um the slow rhythms of sleep i talk about sleep in my self-care a lot i talk about making sure you get the optimum amount of sleep for who you are um, i don't often recommend a product because i don't feel like people need to go out and buy a lot of things but two years ago i think i have two years now at least a full year that i've been using it properly because it's a complex thing, um, is I have an aura ring. So it was a gift my husband and I gave to each other a couple years ago. And I, I was fascinated with the sleep aspect of that because I had had one of those, um, I had another like $40 tracker where it would track your steps and it would have a watch on it and it would also tell you whether or not you slept or not. And this one measures my oxygen, it measures my full sleep cycle. And the reason I like it is it helps me know when, when I do sleep well, because I think I sleep just fine. I do, I, I don't have trouble sleeping. I go to bed, I go to sleep. Very rarely do I have trouble with sleep. So, it's fascinating to me to know how much I'm actually sleeping and tossing and turning and what that looks like. And if I go to bed with a migraine or if I have a migraine during the day, how that affects my sleep. Sleep is so important. And the process of slowing down and allowing your body to rest in different ways, this particular product has helped me navigate through that with more awareness. Um, I didn't realize that a half an hour before bed, I was actually getting more anxious. Um, my stress levels were actually spiking. So now I embroider an hour before I go to bed. So I may listen to an audiobook. I try really hard not to watch too many videos before bedtime because I've noticed that the embroidery actually gets my anxiety levels down and helps me transmute extra energy before bed and it's so actually much, much more calming and better for my sleep cycle than what I thought watching a video or two an hour before bed or um, 
doing dishes or doing laundry or folding things. Like I thought those things were okay. No, no, a transmutation of energy is what I need. <laughs> and that was something I learned. Um, the other thing that this talks about is body temperature. And I'm really gonna explore this, I think a little bit more. Um, I think I innately know this quite a bit about how um, So it talks about it here, too much social interaction or too much incoming information or energy can strain your psychic digestive capacity and create an overload of subtle heat in the body. I actually have struggled with, back to the aura ring, I have struggled the whole time I've had it with weird temperature fluctuations that the aura ring just basically tells me it doesn't know what's going on. So I have actually a scientific tool that I put on my finger every single day that measures when I get too much energy and I get too much energy overload and I don't transmute enough. Um, I have noticed that doing embroidery in the evening in recent times and really conscientiously transmuting the energy, my temperature at night has been more steady. But when I wasn't doing that, I would have a direct correlative temperature increase in my body from being busy during the day, doing a lot, and then the temperature at night of my body being up. And I can be as much as seven points higher than my baseline. And when I transmute energy, if I do that, I'm either at zero or below. And then my sleep score goes higher. So my, my physical body's temperature gets lower and I'm actually able to get a deeper, more restful sleep. So I'm actually able to track it. And that's pretty interesting. Um, but I have, I'm also postmenopausal, So I also have, and I've been having hot flashes since I was 34. So yeah, that, or 36, somewhere right around in there. Hot flashes are awful. Um, the other thing was the story of the koala and the shamanic regeneration, the capacity to transform through suffering and rise above it. Koala wisdom arises when we initially fail our attempts to resolve our suffering, making things worse through our unskilled efforts. And then in our darkest moments, we have an unexpected spiritual epiphany that transforms us. The mature soul experiences sacred law as a guiding wisdom which will not always play to our whims and wishes and yet deeply respectful and honoring of the highest good of all beings. And as I'm reading this, there's something else that bubbles up um, about our, as women, so I'm talking to the women who are listening to this, our participation in politics and voting and contributing to our world at large. I have a huge capacity of passion for social justice and equity, and I have my whole life. I mean, I got my parents to do recycling when it was not a thing. I was very adamant about saving the sea turtles and saving the oceans, and I have always been very adamant about things that other people seem to think is just this, um, I don't know, my dad at one point tried to talk me into going into the Peace Corps because there's this undercurrent in my whole life of contributing to the betterment of humanity as a whole, the whole planet, we're all connected. I know we all have these individual nations around the world and we all have these individual cultures we come from which are extraordinarily valuable as the koala story reinforces that, the indigenous story of the medicine of the koala. And also, we are all connected. We are all brothers and sisters on this planet and we have this unique opportunity in our modern day and time that the world is smaller. They talk about that in economics. The world is very small. Every product you buy is interconnected with someone somewhere else in the world. 
And that is also a true statement. So how do we socially as a whole people integrate those things? And koala medicine brought up very much for me this awful inequity that the United States has allowed and we have in many ways we have allowed it to happen through apathy through thinking that and I'll use Roe v. Wade as a good example I know women who are like oh it'll never get overturned don't worry about it nobody would take that away we fought really hard for that uh-huh we did as women we fought really hard for that before I was even born but that doesn't mean somebody's not gonna come around and decide that they want more power and they wanna take your rights away from you. The one thing I've learned in this 3D world is that apathy equals injustice and overwhelm and stepping back and saying, I'll let somebody else do it creates a vacuum that someone with ill intention is going to fill. And it's the same thing in your life, in your microcosm of your life. If you don't do something, somebody else will, and it will fill that gap. If you don't nurture the relationship with your partner, your partner will find dissatisfaction with that and will find some other way to fulfill it. You have to choose each other all the time. You have to continue to participate in your life. That is one of the big reasons that I started reframing what blueprints are because too many times people come for a psychic reading and they're like, I just wanna know about this one thing. And I'm like, yeah, but, and, if you want to be an active participant in your life, you need to know the key pieces that will help you make choices and your guides want you to know this information and to get sidetracked and down the rabbit hole of things that don't serve you that don't help you grow you don't you're no longer an active participant you have allowed in that vacuum something else to take its place your free choice is then given up and as a woman in this country who I had to fight really hard to get my tubes tied. I had to be awfully harsh and drastic and scare the bejiminis out of my doctor to get my tubes tied. And I love my children, but if I had had the means to get my tubes tied when I was 18, I would have done it. But at the time, it wasn't an option. And even today, thank goodness for a doctor on Instagram who puts out lists all the time of all the doctors that are willing to do tubals without question. If you know your body and you're a woman and you wanna get your tubes tied, go get them done. Because you should not be held hostage to a governmental body or a doctor that might say, oh, well, you're a woman, you might change your mind who undermines your ability to know your own body and your own life. And to top that off, we have an, a judicial system that is so overtaken with people who have stepped into vacuums that we have left them. We as women, who are half the population, have left that vacuum. And we can't do that anymore. We have to hold each other up. We have to empower each other and we have to step into a place that is important. And I'm seeing the signs. The signs are there that we can do this and we don't have to give up the things we want. I want a good relationship with my husband. I want to have a quiet time at House to Ruth draw to, but I also know that we have to step into these places without fear and we have to hold our power and we can do it without having to be in a place where we feel like we have to be masculine to do it. We can step into these places with our feminine strength. 
Because one thing I've learned in my life is that I admire many men in my life and I have learned so much from them. But I will argue that women have a lot more power than we give ourselves credit for. And I'm not talking about sword wielding vengeance and destruction, though if you have ever met a woman scorned, that, that's a thing. <laughs> but what I'm talking about is this koala card. This koala card is talking about the mature strength of becoming the embodiment of universal wisdom, the ability to anchor in to your feminine connection. And if you can't eat eucalyptus leaves, eating laurel, pine, paperbacks, being able to drink the water from a seeming empty well, find the resources, find the connections to those around us that lift us up, not drag us down. And women drag each other down all the time and they don't even realize they're doing it. I had a woman that I respect very much say something to me the other day that I had to really bite the end of my tongue and go, wow, you have no idea how demeaning that statement was. And she didn't mean it that way. So I didn't take it that way. I didn't take it the way she meant it because I knew that that comes from her wounding and that comes from generations of women pulling each other down because that's what men do to us. Not all of them, not all men. I am very blessed to have many men in my life that don't do that. And I had a wonderful father who didn't do that all of the time. He did do it some, but not all the time. And we have a lot more power than we've ever had. And we as women are allowing that to slip through our fingers. So let's not do that, ladies. Let's step up, let's vote. Let's go to council meetings. Let's go to city meetings. Let's call our representatives. Let's call our city leaders. Let's have conversations. Let's write letters. Let's make phone calls. Let's do things that empower each other and also help us stand up individually and it doesn't have to be a big thing you know sit in front of your computer and write one letter uh, go online there's all these different places that you can go that the letters go directly to the offices and I know they don't read them all I know that and I know when you call your senator they don't really want to listen but they do tally it they do tally that call what are you calling about when you leave a message they tally it and they tally how many times people call for or against a thing. They don't care what you say. They just want to know, are you for or against whatever thing? And they do tally that and it does affect their vote. So, unless they're an asshole, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> so I encourage you to be involved. I think it's important. The risk that we're giving up our power is very high. And before it gets better, it's probably gonna get worse. And the worse it gets is dependent on how much we participate. There is change coming. We don't have to let that change be a scary thing. Because you know what? We have a lot of power. We're half the population or more, depending on where you're at. So step up to the plate participate and participate in your life and participate in the lives of your sisters in a positive way. Lift each other up. This is important. So that's it for daily devotional. I have no idea what day this is going to go forward, but I wish you a blessed day and I will see you in prayer. Blessed be.